Hello everyone and shalom. Hope everyone's doing well. Today is April 22nd, 2022. Today we are loading up and getting ready to bust some caps up in the devil again today. Gotta always be spiritual gangsters in a world full of spiritual pranksters. And many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's why I'm even here today. We are going to go to Romans chapter 8. We're going to read the beginning of the verse and we're going to go to where it's generally stopped. There's a reason that they will stop in a certain spot. Because when you cut that piece out of that entire verse there, it can be put into other contexts and used. We are going to read up to that point. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the, what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. A lot of times, even, it'll get stopped at the re righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, and then period, stop. Well, I, as I read it, the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, comma, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, period. That's the end of the sentence. That'll bring you to um, line number five. So right now we have a certain amount of context to the verse that could be pulled out and put into other things. A lot of you, and I have as well, I've heard it preached numerous times where it's just, and then people also do it on comments on Facebook and stuff. And that's where it goes just to that point. And then it is so usable into so many other aspects. This is why I say it can be done that way. And this is why the whole context and the gospel is the way that it is, is very important. That's, that's called exegesis. That's the way that it is. Isogesis is when we put our own spin on it. It's very important that we exegete the word for what it is. Because what usually is said, like I said, it'll stop at that point. Or they'll put the period where that is. So they will stop at that point of um, the law may be fulfilled in us. And then period, stop. Then they don't even mention who will walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Because if you stop where the, the law was fulfilled in us, and then use that in something, you can use that in hyper grace. If you say there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, you can turn that into hyper grace. Well, there's conditions for not being condemned and who are considered being in Christ Jesus within the context of this whole chapter. That is exactly why we must utilize the context of the gospel for what it is. Otherwise, it's going to continue to be manipulated and forced into a more humanistic type doctrine as it has been turning into my whole life. I am 47, born in 74. I'm at the end of, I was able to remember at the end of the 70s era, all the way through the 80s, all the way through the 90s, 2000s. I was born at a weird time and I see what God's done for me for a reason. I see where numerous couple of times have changed. 
And decades, things usually change. Of course, we've seen this. And of course, somebody older than me has experienced much more than that as well. So when you hear their stories, listen and think about that because that's the only way we know what was is by people speaking what once was. Because once we stop talking about one, once, what once was, like if I don't teach my child and my child does not teach what was taught, which is the gospel as it is, the true way, the narrow way, the way that Christ preached it, not the way humans have changed it into humanistic. If I teach him, he takes over this ministry, I teach him to be humanistic, then he's going to be humanistic and go with that way. What I have taught him was, you go with the ways of Jesus, and he sees in the world right now that I face opposition where the hyper-grace gospel is everywhere. And even if it's not hyper-grace, it's super blessing. So, you know, it's always something completely ridiculous to give you a reason to not follow the ways of the master. That is why the church is very powerless today. That is why we keep seeking for his ways and we keep saying, you know, more, more, more and keep wanting more. Well, that's because we're so unfulfilled. Well, why are we unfulfilled? Because we're not trying to fulfill him. Remember, he made a relationship with us and a relationship is two ways. Can't always call on him. And then when he calls on you, say, I'm busy. What happens when you do that to your girlfriend or your spouse or your friends or anybody? They're like, come on, man. We're created in his image. It's kind of the same way. You know, people are going, God, help me, help me. And he's going, come on, we're in some crazy times and I need my body to be my body. And they're going, um, no, no, that's works-based stuff. I can't do that stuff. What do you mean, body of Christ? I'm supposed to be the body of Christ? And then deny what he says, but then stand up at church and go, I'm the body of Christ. They do it. Yes, please think about that because sometimes we've done that ourselves without knowing. Catch yourself when you do and repent of it. Make yourself better. There's a way of life and this way of life will, the way of pure righteousness and holiness life is death to the world. They'll say that's death. That's why he says, die to yourself. Death is life. Okay. Well, there you go. Because you have died to the ways of the world. You've overcome it and he will give you life. Conditional. You have to understand that the new age gospel has manipulated so much stuff incorrectly that that's why we see no power, we see no healings, we see everybody desperate because they deny the power of God. They won't even follow him. Friends, if he's going to give you a gift, if God is going to give you a gift, you have to exercise that gift in practice. If you're playing baseball or any sport or instrument or doing anything, studying, getting anything that you do requires you to seek it out. God is the same way. But then here is the rest of the meat of that for it to all fit together. Starting at five. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Okay? This is how we're telling you how there will be no condemnation in Christ that has paid for our sin. It isn't just because he went to the cross and then gave us excuses to be extremely hyper-grace, 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 and pervert his grace into immorality. Going back for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind 
on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. Yes, you hear it all kinds of all over the place today. All kinds of different people with all kinds of different versions of how you can tell their flesh is hostile to God when they say, I don't want to do that. I don't have to follow that. I don't, I don't, I don't. My Bible says, my, and, the, and there's an excuse to not follow what Christ says when he says to walk as he walked. We can't call ourselves Christ-centered or Christians and don't follow what Christ teaches. That's not being Christ-like. If you're being Christ-like, you will follow and walk the way he does. He says that to you in places in, in the word. Back to line seven. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Yes, you hear it today. Men all over the pulpits telling you, do not follow any of that because it's works-based. That is all completely taken out of context because after you come to the knowledge of Jesus, you become a body of, you become part of the body of Christ. You are grafted in to the house of Israel. You are grafted into him. To be grafted into something is a transformation. That's why it's called the way. Walking the narrow way to the path of heaven. The wide path to hell, as the words say. There's a reason for these sayings in the Bible. The narrow way is a harder path. But yet as is preached, it's an easier path. Well, they say it's an easier path because you throw out the baby with the bathwater and throw out what Jesus says. But that is totally incorrect. And telling you that hostile flesh that is hostile to God will not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Sentence 8. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, in, but in the spirit, sorry. You, you, however, not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, okay? How do you know if you are with God? The spirit of God dwells with you. If you are in the flesh, the Spirit is not with you. Continuing on, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit of life because of righteousness. That is where he comes in, seals you, cleanse you of your sin to grant you the Holy Spirit to become an overcomer. Overcoming your sin, overcoming the world. Many people don't believe it. The earth itself now is a test for eternity. Which path will you choose? The narrow way or the wide way? Narrow, heaven, wide path to the lake of fire. That is what this world is, is, a, is. It's a test for eternity. Since the original design has been flawed with the sin of man and death entered the world and sin entered the world, the design has changed, my wonderful friends. We have to look at that. The design changed from that. That original design from the Garden of Eden pre-sin will commence again when he comes to right all wrongs and there will be a new heaven and new earth. That's when 
the testing is over. In this life now, and at this time, since the original design was changed due to the follies of man and our sin, and what happened in the garden with Eve's sin and Adam's sin as well, original design is now entirely different. There's sin and death, pain. Everything has changed. The intent for this world was a Garden of Eden and perfection, a paradise. That was the original intention. And he will come back again and set things straight. And that original design will come again via new heaven and a new earth. Sorry, I got a little bunny trailed. And uh, let's get back to where we're at to finish the, the verse here. Um, we'll go back to 10 here and go all the way to the end before I say anything else. 10. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, Yes, that spirit, if it dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Continuing on, verse 12. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. There's reasons for those things. Certain sins cause things and damage to your body. Fornication and sleeping around causes diseases. Verses that it defiles your soul. There's, there's a lot of reasons that we do not want to live in the deeds of our body because it'll just put us to death. 14, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But when you have received the spirit of adoptions as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Yes, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit, telling us we are children of God. That's personal. It's very personal. He will speak. It's a relationship. Walk with him and, and you will get revelation. 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided we suffer with him in order that we may be glorified with him. That, that line 17 itself could just preach itself. Like, that's a whole sermon right there. Heirs of Christ and fellow heirs of Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may be glorified with him. Mm -hmm. That we're heirs provided we suffer. Give that to your prosperity preacher next time and have them break that down for you. They, they'll, they'll probably tell you they'll get back to you because they don't have anything to say to that because they're going to tell you you're always supposed to be blessed and this and this and everything's hunky-dory like you're in a wonderful field riding a pony looking at all these wonderful flowers and posies and the beautiful scent of the pussy willows are coming off of the river that's not what life is <laughs> it's a it's a it's a, it's a joke that, that's a joke the that's fanatical men painting new age doctrine pictures for you and that is not christ okay this is why we want to be sure we deliver the gospel as it is we will be fellow heirs with Christ. Some of us go through more suffering than others. Some people only go through certain like anxieties in their heads or whatever else. There's other people that can't walk. Wonderful men like Justin Peters, who brings the gospel, 
Um, forgive me if I say something. I believe he has cerebral palsy, I believe it is. I know he's bound to a wheelchair. I'm not sure what his ailment is. Wonderful men of God. Wonderful men of God that do go through life's sufferings. They share in the airs with Christ. And they know this, especially Justin. I know this, the way he preaches. I listen to him too. The way he preaches, it's guaranteed. He knows he's with Christ. He knows he's all good. The same way with me. I happen to have arthritis. I have degenerative disc disease. have some other things going on. I'm not going to go down my ridiculous list of stuff. It's good. It's all good. Is it hard? Of course it is. I'm completely okay and have that deep shalom, that peace, because I know that I'm just sharing in sufferings with him. I'll be glorified with him. There will be a new heaven and new earth. I will arise to a new body. I will arise to new everything. There will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more death, no separation of anything, no anger, no arguments. Paradise. That's what I look forward to. New heaven and new earth. And my focus has been that. And it really helps me on my journey knowing that that's at the end of my path. If you don't know what is at the end of your path, you don't know where you're going, nor why you're striving for that ending. You are on the way with Christ and striving for an ending with him. An eternal relationship that will be in a wonderful paradise. A new heaven, a new earth. And again, like I said, there will be nothing wrong there. The original design put right. That is why there is heavy testing in our lives on this earth. And he gives us from the first breath we breathe to the last breath we breathe to give an account and how he keeps coming after us and showing us his way, granting us the Holy Spirit. If we are non-believers, when we didn't believe, there, he would put signs and, and things like we would know. People would say stuff. We would, there would be synchronicities. We would see stuff and go, wow, all of us before we came to Christ, there was a way we came to Christ. And we know there is many, many, many different ways he will use to get us to come to him. Many paths to Jesus, many paths to the Messiah. Only one path to the Father, and that is the Messiah. We're going to go to 18 now. For I consider that the sufferings at the present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Yeah, you know when you go through those sufferings, there is your end. Get that end in sight. Goal. Like when you shoot a basket, you're looking at the basket, shooting the basket. And anything like that. You, you want to hit that target. Hit your target. That target's Jesus. And he tells you throughout the word. The word is his guidelines and instructions showing you how to live and how to get to him and how to achieve eternity with him. Listen to him and not mankind. 19. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's be oh, <laughs> it's beautiful. Yes, I love that verse. 22, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. Yes, life is hard. God knows that it is. He knows. He knows it's hard. He was here. He knows it was hard. He knows. He knows. The song, he knows. <laughs> there you go. He knows. 23, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly? Yes, inside. We work things out. Talk, self-talk inside. As we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. 
the new heaven and new earth that the bodies will get to go there. For in this hope, we are saved. Yes, keep that hope. We are saved. Choose that target. Keep that hope. Pick up the cross every day. Carry it. Go towards that goal for the blessed hope. New hope that is seen is not hope. Yeah, new age doctrine. This new hope is not hope. Do away with this, do away with that. That's not hope. Doing away with God is not going to give us hope. Turning back to God is what will give us hope. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's what will give us the hope that we need. For who hopes for what he sees? With a question mark. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who, search, he who searches our hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Sometimes things are hard. Sometimes we think that God isn't going to be able to make a way out of what's bad. He will take things that are rough, tough, bad, horrible situations, the highlands of afflictions, make warriors, wonderful sons and daughters out of them, and... It's, it's wonderful. That's just, that, that is exactly what he does. Uh, let's see where we are back here yet, sorry. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know for those who he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that we might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he has also called. And those whom he called also is justified. And those whom he has justified, he also glorified. Hallelujah. And that is those who are in him. Those that are in him are his disciples. And he says, you cannot be your dis my disciple if you do not follow me. 31. What, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will we not also with him graciously give us all things? Yes, the Son of God was given up for us. So we are to graciously give up all things unto him. Yes, that is not preached today. It is not preached to lay down your life. It is preached that you live your life and call on God when you feel like it. That isn't what God wants. He wants a relationship. That's what it's about. People say, it's not about religion. It's about a relationship. So they can get out of things, but then they don't even have the relationship either. If you're going to say it's not about religion, and it's not about reading anything or following anything he says, well, then you might seriously want to start thinking about living the way that he has asked you to live since you say it's about relationship, show your relationship. I challenge you to do that because we need to do so. 33, 34, sorry. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. Yeah. More than that, who was raised? Who is raised at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Yep, 
the one interceding is the Messiah. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, hallelujah, amen and amen and amen. That is Romans chapter 8 in its full entirety. For what the word says, for what Jesus wants, for how we are to be. For how we are to be for the gates to eternity. <laughs> yeah, he tells us how to be so we can get to the gates of eternity. It's exactly how it is, and it's what he's done, and that's what his word is for, is to give us the instructions to walk the way and, and give us the path to life. To give us the path to life. We've got to be the spiritual gangsters. Stand up for the gospel and tear down the New Age spiritual pranksters that keep throwing out everything that will give us life because that is, in fact, just again, another version of the world's Messiah, not the biblical Messiah. So keep that reel up in your brain until I see you next time. It's Brother Dwayne.